We're now going to look at the drawing list in the project manager. You'll see IEC module one is our current project, but it hasn't got a little plus sign next to it. What I've done is I've removed any drawing associations with that project so that we can start with a nice clean project and start adding the drawings as we go. Now I'm going to add an individual drawing in this particular case, which is going to be our contents drawing. I've got it open here already. There's IEC contents.dwg. What I do to add that drawing is I right click over the project and add the active drawing. You'll notice I can create a new drawing and add drawings as well. I'm going to go to add active drawing. Yes, I do want to apply the project default values. And that adds that nice and neatly to the actual project itself. You'll notice it's displaying a number here at the end, which isn't part of the file name. That is actually the sheet name. You can show in the drawing list the sheet name and the drawing number, but you have to set those settings in the drawing properties. So you right click here, go to properties and go to drawing properties in the project itself. So at the moment, I've got a sheet value of 01. That is what's been displayed, but I've got a drawing number of 001. So the sheet might be 01, but the drawing number could be different. So I'm going to OK that. And I'm going to come up here to this icon, Drawing List Display Configuration. Now at the moment, in the display order, it shows the file name, which is ieccontents.dwg, and it shows the sheet number there, which is 01. I want the drawing number to show as well. So I click Drawing Number, and add it across like so. And then I select them here. I want Drawing Number to come first. So I move that up, so I've got Drawing Number, File Name, Sheet Number. When I OK that now, You'll see in the project manager there's drawing 001 IEC contents.dwg and it's 01 as the sheet number. Now, what you might do as well, if I just zoom and pan here in the drawing, you might update this accordingly. So you can see that that is sheet 01 of 06 there. You might update the numbering there slightly to put a double zero perhaps, and you might update to put the drawing number in. There's the drawing number there. So if I double click, I can go in here, there's drawing number, so I change the value there to 001, I OK that, and that drawing number now applies to the drawing list there. That's great, but I might want to add multiple drawings to my project as well. So let's just double click on the wheel to zoom extents. We'll save that drawing as well, because we've made some changes. So we'll update that as well. Now, I might want to add a group of drawings to my project, instead of just doing them one at a time. That could be quite hard work if I've got 200 drawings to add. So what I can do is I can go to the project here, right click and go to add drawings. The trick here now is to select all the drawings you want to add. So I've got the bill of materials drawing there, cabinet drawing. I've already got the contents, so the rest of them I can just select like so. The contents I don't need. What I can do now is just click on add. Do I want to apply the project default values? Of course I do takes a few moments, but they soon get loaded up into the project. Now, if you've got 200 drawings to do to add to a project, think how quick that is compared to doing it one by one. Now, what you'll notice, look, there's the numbering system. There's the sheet numbers, but it's done it in alphabetical order. So what we need to think about now is the numbering of each drawing. Now, you can't really do this in one job lot. This is an individual thing that you would do anyway, because you need to update the title block for each drawing as well. So what you might do there is go into that one there, which is 07, right click, properties, drawing properties. So it's sheet 07, but you need to give it drawing 007 as well. Click on OK, that updates, and that's done. So that's got sheet 07 there. But has it got the information we need? You just click on it and it updates. Can you see that? It took a little while, but it got there. Now, all of these need doing as well. So if I went for, say, O2, just to do it sequentially, what I might do there is right-click, go to Properties there, Drawing Properties, give that a drawing number of 002 as well. And I'll click on OK, and that updates as well. It takes a little while to update these drawings. So what you need to do is just go to there. You might want to minimize it, maximize it, and you need to refresh it. Now, the good thing is we have a refresh button. So as soon as I refresh, there's 002 there. Now you can see that that's come in at the bottom. There's nothing to stop you updating these as you go. They will update, and when you do close AutoCAD and open it up again, what you'll find is those numbers are sequential. 
So you can update that and update the order. So that is your drawing list in your project manager. And you can see how descriptive that is. It makes your life a lot easier. So we've done 002 there and we've done 007. So what we need to remember is we need to update the title blocks. The nice thing about the drawing list, I can double click the drawing and there it is. It becomes the current drawing in AutoCAD. So what I need to do now is go into the title block, just double click on the block there and I need the drawing number. So I go up and down the list here. There's drawing number there. Click on that, put that value in. That's 007. Click on OK. That title block is updated. I might do that for the two as well. So make sure that you do that as well. Just double click on the drawing. It'll open up. Double click on the title block and you make sure that you go to drawing number. That one there, drawing hash. And that would be 002. And as you can see, depending on sheet number and drawing number, this has to be updated on an individual basis on the title block. So what you've got to do here is make sure that your drawing list is current, make sure it's up to date. And the good thing is I can bring in all of my drawings at once. I don't have to do them individually. Let's have a look now at descriptions and sections in an AutoCAD drawing. Now what we've got to look at is we've got to look at drawings and look at what the description and sections actually do for us. So we're still working in the drawing list. Current drawing I've got open is IEC power three phase. So there's the drawing there. Now if I right click on that drawing and go to properties and drawing properties there, in the dialog box I've got the option of setting sheet value 02, drawing value 002. I can add a section and a subsection. Now the section and the subsection are optional, but in this case my section might be power, for example. The reason being is it allows you breakdowns into the database behind the drawing. So if you're creating reports, spreadsheets, databases, these sections, these fields allow you to describe things in more detail. So that's power and the subsection might be three phase, for example. Now we might need to put a description there as well. Now in this particular case, it's power. So description would be power there, maybe. And description two might be three phase. Now I'm just filling up boxes here. I'm not actually putting in information you might use. I'm just showing you how you would set this up. So once you've set that up, you click on OK, and you'll notice now in the details section here, can you see description power, description three phase? You don't see the actual section and subsection. They don't actually appear in the description there. They're just part of the database settings for that drawing. So I can go and edit any drawing like that. But more importantly, let's go back to the project. And if I right click on the project, and go down to the project properties. Does it have anything about sections in there? Let's go and have a look at our drawing format here. Does it cover anything like sections? It doesn't. These are purely database settings. If I go to styles, again, it's all about wiring, cross-referencing, wire numbers. But the cross-reference format is nice. And you can see there that I can do numbering, sheet numbering, and so on between drawings. Wire numbers, there's my wire numbers. You'll notice there as well on the screen, can you see that my Autodesk 360 is updating because I'm logged in? I've made those changes to the drawing and it's updating that on my Autodesk 360 cloud account, which is great because obviously when I go and log in to 360 later on, I've got the most current drawing. It does that automatically for you. It's a very nice feature. Components wise, as you can see, components, I can change the settings again as well, just like we did when we set up the project earlier. But I can go into this at any time. That's the nice thing about it. So I'll just cancel that now. And all of those settings are set up for that drawing. So what I might do for the contents here, let's go to the contents drawing, double click on it. That makes it current. And then I'll right click and go to properties again and drawing properties. And you'll notice all I've got there is contents. So let's change that to contents in capitals. Always looks better in capitals on listings. So we'll go contents there. Description two we don't need because there's no power or anything involved. But the section there, we might change that also to content. I'll OK that now. That updates. And you'll notice there in the description, contents is updated. So that's what this description and sections does for you. It's an extension of the drawing manager. And it allows you to give a description to your drawings, which is important. You can bring those fields into the drawings if you wish. They're in the database as well. So that when you export data to databases and things like that, the information about the drawings is there.